Hello, everybody. This is Dude with the Food here. I hope you all are doing extremely well. So today, it's a little rainy and cold outside. You know, everyone's all like, oh, it's cold, it's rainy, oh, what am I going to do and everything. I thought I'd just battle myself a little bit and make myself one of my favorite things in the world. Black French pressed coffee. Because as everyone knows right now, coffee is my blood type. Yes, I'm even getting excited just pouring it into the mug and everything. Oh, I'm just thinking to myself, hey, I'm going to drink some coffee. It's going to warm me up and it's going to be delicious. But anyway, let's get back on topic. So, you know, normally when days like this happen, when it's cold and rainy, normally what we think of is, you know, comfort food. You know, the kind of food that just fills your stomach up, puts you in a better mood, makes you want to get up, maybe do a happy dance. Or, you know, depending on how much you eat, maybe you won't be wanting to dance. But anyway, today I thought I'd tell you guys all about one of my favorite comfort foods in the world. And that would be the humble this. And this is polenta, one of life's greatest treasures. Some of you know it as grits, some of you know it as polenta, whatever suits you, Fanny, it's up to you. So anyways, polenta is nothing more than just a very fine, coarse cornmeal that has just simmered down until it kind of forms this sort of thick thing that just sticks to your ribs. It's very delicious. It's kind of hard to describe what it's like, but you know, it's just really delicious. Me, I'm kind of a savory person. Some people like a sweet, whatever suits you fancy. That's up to you because it's your polenta. But today I'm going to be telling you how you can do this in a foolproof way to make your life easier. So anyway, let's get started. So for this, you are going to need about two cups of polenta, as you can see right here, following that along with about six tablespoons or so of butter. I just really love butter. And following that, you're going to need about, this is about a small onion right here. This is about maybe a cup of minced onion right over there. And then your liquids, you're going to start with, this is a combination of water and heavy cream. This is about two cups of water, two cups of heavy cream. I just thought I'd combine it because I don't want to do too many dishes. Now, this next thing is optional. I just found a little bit of my homemade chicken stock in my freezer. I just thought I'd use that up just to get rid of it. Is this stock necessary? Not really. You can use whatever liquid you want. You can use water, vegetable stock, whatever suits your fancy. But I'm just using it just to use it. Again, your liquid is up to you. And then following that, we are going in with our glorious, freshly grated fontina and Parmesan cheese. I really like this flavor combination. I like that creaminess of the fontina and the sharp saltiness of the Parmesan. I just think that's just a really good flavor thing. But use whatever cheese that suits your fancy. Use cheddar, use gouda, use gruyere, whatever you like. Now, my next secret that I like to do is this little guy. And that little guy is fresh nutmeg. Nutmeg is one of those things that's kind of a food amplifier. It takes food that's already amazing and just makes it even better. I'll explain that a little bit, but first, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to have ourselves a nice clean bowl here, and to that we are going to add in all of the polenta. Whee! Yep, I just did that. You heard that correctly. Now, this part is actually a little bit of an interesting thing. What we're going to do is we are going to take four cups of our liquid. I'm just going to use the chicken stock that I was reheating right here, and we are going to pour it over the polenta. That's right. You are seeing this correctly. I know a lot of purists are probably looking at this thing going, what are you doing? Just trust me on this. If you don't like to do this, you don't have to do it. But anyways, my idea here is getting kind of a pre-soak on your polenta right here. In a way, this just kind of helps that polenta hydrate even better. So this way too, you're kind of getting a jump start. You're getting it already filled with liquid. So that way it's gonna keep it much more creamy. It's gonna keep it much more of a better soft texture that you want it to. And that's why I'm using a whisk right here too, just to make sure that every single one of those granules is coated in that liquid. Just wanna make sure that you get a nice stir. And then a little bit, after it sits for a while, it's gonna kind of resemble wet sand, so to speak. Again, a lot of peers are probably saying you shouldn't be doing this, but this is just my way of doing it. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. So after a couple of minutes, you can already see right here, it's already starting to get very thick over here. It's not cooking or anything. It's just getting very thick because it's getting hydrated from all that liquid that's inside. And that's just going to make this process so much more easier. But this is just one of the secrets that I'm revealing right here. I'll get to the other secrets in a little bit. But anyway, that's just the first thing that you need to do. Now, the next step is just you're going to grab a nice pot right here. So, and to that, you are going to add in your six tablespoons of butter over a nice medium heat. We don't want to get a hard sear. We don't want to get a hard sizzle on it because we're going to be sweating the onions a little bit. We just want to get a nice little melt, so to speak. This is going to be a gentle cooking coming up for, in a little bit. 
Okay, next to the clip. All right, so now that our butter is melted right here, now is the time that we are going to take all of our onions and we are going to add that to that melted, heated butter. And at this point here, I'm going to explain it just for one moment. Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing in a little bit, I'm just going to add just a little bit of salt to this. I'm not seasoning the onions. I'm just adding a little bit. Because salt helps extract moisture, it'll help the onions sweat better. Again, this is not for seasoning purposes. This is to help get that water extracted out of the onions so they sweat. I'm not looking for a saute. I'm looking for a sweat. There is a difference. I'm just looking for them to get nice and translucent. This is probably going to take maybe just three, four minutes or so. But again, you just want to cook them very gently, cook them very slow. You don't want to see any color on them. You just want to see them until they're nice and clear on the inside. So after about four minutes or so, you could already see that they're starting to sizzle up. We're just going to give that one more quick stir over here. And then, the, and then after that, we are going to add in the rest of our four cups of liquid, which is the water and the heavy cream. Again, whatever liquid you want to use is optional. I just like using this combination because I feel like, you know, the water just helps it, you know, soak a little bit more. But I feel like that heavy cream just adds that nice sweetness that cornmeal has and everything, you know. But anyways, that's just me. It's whatever you want to use. So anyway, so now at this time, we are going to add in that liquid right here, dump it all in right there, give that a nice stir, and then we are going to crank the heat up back to high heat just to make sure that it gets back up to a boil. Yes, we do want to have that at a boil just for a little bit. So we'll go ahead, give that a nice stir. It's probably going to take just a little bit, but in the meantime, just relax. You're going to be okay. You're going to be fine. Just give that a nice stir, make sure everything is nice and incorporated, and just give that a little bit, and then we will be back in just one moment. And here we are back in that one moment. You can already see it's starting to come up to a boil right now, so then at this point is when we are going to add in that wet polenta mixture. Add in that nice little wet sand polenta mixture, and we're gonna add that into all of our boiling liquid, like so. And just get that all nice and incorporated in there. Just like that. And all right. And now at this point too, now that that's been added back in, we're just gonna let that simmer and we're gonna grab our whisk back and we're just gonna whisk that again. And we're just gonna keep stirring it like so until it kind of gets a little bit thick. You wanna stir this just for a little bit for a maybe just a minute on high heat. And then after a while, you are gonna reduce the heat to medium and you're just gonna let that simmer slowly until it starts to thicken again. It's kind of like, you know, when you're making your traditional polenta, you just wanna stir it until it gets nice and thick. And then that way it's just gonna simmer away and it'll start cooking itself. You just whisk it, you whisk it, you whisk it. And again, using a whisk is crucial. It just ensures that all of your granules of polenta are gonna be coated in that liquid because sometimes not all of them get coated. So make sure that you are using a whisk during this stage. Just like so. Also, this does look like a lot of whisking, but it is necessary because you do want to keep whisking because you don't want any of your polenta getting stuck to the bottom of the pan. But that's going to be coming up soon. I'm going to be telling you my next secret of how to cook your polenta without having to do that so much. That's right. I did say this was a foolproof method, and this is my favorite method of cooking polenta in the world, and I am going to share it with you. But in the meantime... Let's just keep stirring it, keep stirring it. You already start to see it's starting to almost enhance, so to speak. You're starting to see more of the polenta come to the top just like that. That just means that it's starting to cook. It's starting to thicken up. It's starting to say, hey, I'm ready to be cooked now properly, and I'm ready for whatever you want. So now with this stage two, as I said earlier, we are going to add in some freshly grated nutmeg. Something about nutmeg, it just helps bring out more of the flavor of the polenta. It helps bring out the flavor of the cheeses. I see a lot of chefs use it for their, you know, macaroni and cheese Mornay sauces. So I thought I would use it in this. And it does help. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. That is optional. And if you can't find the freshly grated, it's okay to use the powdered stuff. No one's going to judge you for using that. But I just use freshly grated because I did go to a culinary program where I was trained to do this. And I just think it tastes better personally. But again, that is all up to you. Now, the reason I'm adding it now is just to help get that polenta again, just kind of give it a head start, so to speak. Just kind of latching on, helping it release its flavor just a little bit more. But in the meantime, let's keep whisking again, because we are not done stirring yet. We're almost there, but we're not. Just a little bit more. 
just bear with me. This is a very long process. And again, you know, you see a lot of people too that try to eat, you know, they are they're like sweet, sa savory polenta. Did I just say sweet, savory? My God, and I'm sorry for saying that. What I meant was some people like it sweet, some people like it savory. I'm personally a savory guy myself, but again, this is your polenta. You do what you like with it. I'm just a savory guy. This is a savory polenta dish. You don't have to make this if you don't want to. I just thought I'd show you how I make it. Okay? Okay. Yes, I do a lot of whisking. It does happen, you know, because that's food. But I just thought I'd show you, this is how long it takes to get it thickened up. It's not something that you could do just like that. You know, this isn't your standard instant grits or anything. These are legitimate polenta or grits as you would like to call them. And if you do like to use the instant stuff, I normally like to use it if I'm making baked grits or, you know, griddled grits, so to speak, you know. But this is the stuff that, you know, this is fun to just take your time with it. Let it all just do its thing. It's going to be working you magic. You're going to be glad that you put in the effort into doing this. Because I believe in you, and I love you, and I want to teach you guys about patience. Again, this is not something that you can just rush and everything. This is probably going to take maybe five-ish, three-ish so minutes. This isn't too terribly long. But again, this is just the idea, too, that I'm trying to provide, is that food does, if you want to eat good food, you do need to take your time with it just for a little bit. Some of the stuff you can get done in a pinch, but this is something that it is going to take its time. But at this point right here, we are starting to thicken up right now, and that's a good thing. But at this point too, this is coming up to the point where I'm going to reveal my next foolproof secret way of how to finish off your polenta. So at this point, turn it off the heat. You can already see it's nice and thick at this stage right here, but it's not cooked because it's not done yet. We are going to finish off and the next method that I'm going to show you that is going to make your life easier. That method is using a double boiler. Here I got a nice big pot right here with about maybe an inch or so of simmering hot water that I'm trying to bring up to a boil. And I'm going to explain why this process is awesome and will make your life easier. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our pre-cooked polenta right here. We're going to add it to a nice clean bowl over here. And this is what's going to go over that pot of water. Now, because I'm using this bowl right here and, and by using the double boiler, that steam just allows that polenta to cook nice, gentle, and slowly so that way you don't have to stand at the stovetop the whole time whisking the whole time for the next 30 minutes or so it's just a nice thing to say hey i got this under control you go do whatever you want for the next couple of minutes or so and i love this method so much that this is my permanent way of cooking polenta from now on because it just is a stress-free foolproof way of doing so so anyway now that it's in the bowl right here we're going to go back we're going to put this over our pot of simmering water just for a little bit and we're just going to give it one last whisk too just to make sure everything is getting get coated up ready to go and as i said too because you're doing this now that at this point you really don't have to stir it so much and on top of that your polenta has a less chance of sticking inside of the pie because normally sometimes they cook polenta and sometimes it gets burnt to the pot and everything, and there's no way you can go back to fix it. This way, too, it's going to cook nice and slow, nice and gentle. And so that way, it's not going to stick so much to the sides of the pan. I'm going to show you right here. See that right there? It's not sticking too much. Everything's going to get nice, slowly cooked. It's still going to take a little bit longer. But at this point, too, it's going to take maybe about... 45 minutes or so but trust me the patience is really worth the wait at this point now earlier when i said i don't really like to add salt in the beginning because you got to remember too there is a lot of salt inside your cheese that's why i always like to wait until the ending to add seasoning to it because you guys you can see i'm using fontina and parmesan which do have a nice salt content to it so i like to be careful and not worry about that till later so while your polenta is cooking, you just go ahead, do yourself a little happy dance because, you know, you're going to eat, make some polenta. You're going to have a good time, and I like to dance. You don't have to dance. You can do whatever you want. I just like dancing. But anyways, at this point, this has been about 30 minutes since the polenta has been cooking. And as you can see, it's starting to get really thick. It's starting to get really creamy still. It's not getting stuck. You're going to see maybe just a little bit of grit on the side. But at the same time, it's not getting hardcore burnt stuck or anything because you're, getting, you're just cooking it nice and gently and it does make your life easier in this stage. But of course, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna give it a little taste to see how it's doing. Just to see how it is. 
Right here, I thought it was still just a little bit grainy, so I thought I'd give it a little bit longer to cook or so. Now, if your polenta does get a little too thick like mine does right here, you can go ahead and just readjust it with just a little bit of water. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. And that was to just help it, you know, readjust its consistency, making sure that it's still going to be a nice creamy style polenta if you do like it that stiff you don't have to worry about that but me i still like to go for the creamy stuff so i'm just going to go ahead add just a little bit of water to it how about be, be you know get that nice fluff get that nice creamy dreamy steamy texture to it wow creamy dreamy steamy did i just say that i did you are welcome for that one now this next part like an idiot, I forgot to record the part where I actually added the cheese to the polenta. So, for my mistake, here I am grating in a little bit more of the cheese inside of it just to prove I did add cheese to this. And plus, a little extra cheese isn't going to hurt anybody. Plus, I felt like this needed extra cheese. So, you know, it was a mistake, but a win at the same time. But once I start stirring this again, you could already tell that after the cheese has been added, you can start to see a different texture in the polenta. It gets even creamier this way. Now, a lot of naysayers say you're not supposed to add cheese to polenta or grits or anything because it will get stiff. But again, because we use that double boiler method, because we use that slow cooking process, it's just going to keep those polenta nice and creamy and dreamy no matter what. So a little extra cheese isn't going to hurt anybody because we cook them nice and slowly. And nothing is sticking to the sides. Again, you're just going to see maybe a little bit of greens on the side, but that's not a big deal. We're looking at the stuff that I'm stirring up right now. And already it looks freaking amazing. God, I love polenta. I get so happy when I make it. Right? But anyways, now that that's all been stirred in, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to grab myself a clean spoon, give that a taste, see what all it needs. And it is important that you do taste for your seasoning, as I said earlier. At this point, too, I feel like it just needed just a little bit more nutmeg. Again, you don't need a whole lot, just enough to say, you just need just a little bit to tell, let you know, saying, hey, I'm nutmeg, I'm here to make your food taste better. Just trust me on that. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it, it's okay. So anyway, I'm just going to add a little bit more nutmeg, and to that... While I do like the fontina side, I felt like it needed just a little bit more Parmesan cheese, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more to that. By the way, anybody that tells you that anyone just says that if you add too much Parmesan to anything, don't listen to them. I mean, listen to them, but don't, you know, follow what they say. You're in control. You do what you like. Add more cheese, add less cheese. It's your life. Do what you like. But anyways, all we're also going to add just a little bit more fresh cracked black pepper. And as everybody knows, I love lots of pepper. And we're going to go ahead and give that a nice stir. Get everything nice and incorporated inside. Again, it still maintains that creaminess after 45 minutes. This has been about maybe 50 minutes now, now that I've been readjusting and stirring it up or so. But again, as you can see, it's very soft. It's very creamy. It's very light. And it's fluffy. And it's polenta. We're about to put it in our bellies. And it's going to be awesome. But now that I have done that so far, now is the time... If you weren't happy with your salt level, now is the time that you can go ahead and add just a little bit. And when I say a little bit, I mean just a little bit. About maybe two pinches, I would say. Like a two little pinches of salt would be my guesstimate too. Just like that. And you want to make sure that you stir it around. Make sure that salt gets redistributed inside of the polenta. And again... It's going to be very creamy, very soft, very cheesy, very delicious, very stick to your ribs goodiness. Yep, you heard that right. So, because I missed out on adding the cheeses video, I thought I'd go ahead and make up for it and give you a little slow motion polenta. Oh my goodness. Look at that see how light and creamy and fluffy and steamy and dreamy and oh look at that just look oh i'm getting different feelings as i'm looking at that again but you know because we're cooking that for so long what else could we be doing in our meantime while that's cooking well there's lots of things that you could be doing but you know what I'd say? 
why don't I show you how to make a mushroom ragu sauce? Hmm? Does that sound good to you? We'll find out in part two of the next video.